we are definitely in the last days. Pope Francis announces the one world religion. He claims that every religion is a way to arrive at God. I'm telling you what he's doing right now is paving the way, the foundation for a new world order. You guys have to listen to this. He said this on September 13th. Okay, this month, September 13th, 2024. Take a listen to this. Because every religion is a way to arrive at God. Sort of a comparison, an example would be they're sort of like different languages in order to arrive at God. Ma Dio è Dio per tutti. But God is, is God for all. Now, what they are, what he's teaching right now, what he's saying is a one world religion. We know the Bible says in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. So if you're not going through Jesus, you can't get to God the Father. John 14, 16, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But Pope Francis is telling all these other religions and all these other people and everyone in the world that every religion is a way to arrive to God. Krishna, Buddha, uh, this, that, this. Guys, we, we got to really open up our Bibles. We are in these days. We are in these days. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to, given to mankind by which we must be saved. Pope Francis kicking off the most ambitious trip of his pontificate with Indonesia, the world's most populous Muslim-majority country, where his message centered on how different religions can coexist. The Pope stopping by the largest mosque in Southeast Asia. And if God is God for all, then we're all sons and daughters of God. But my God is more important than your God. Is that true? There's only one God, and each of us is a language, so to speak, in order to uh, arrive at God. Muslim, Listen to this. The Bible says this in John chapter 1, verse 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You understand me? So those who believed in his name, whose name? The name of Jesus, then they were given the right to become children of God. So if you do not receive and believe in Jesus Christ, you are not a child of God. Don't listen to this buffoonery. Come in. There, there are different paths. Understood? visiting the tunnel of friendship, linking it to a nearby cathedral, and sharing this sweet moment with the country's grand imam, two leaders practicing what they preach as they called for greater interfaith dialogue. In, regioni, In various regions, we see the emergence of violent conflicts, he said, which are often the result of a lack of mutual respect. Uh, a very important moral it's voice, moral. Professor Chan, in today's volatile world. Uh, Dr. Hedges, uh, perhaps we can bring you into the conversation as well. You know, Pope Francis came with a message of hope and inter-religious harmony has been a key theme throughout his tour. I think it's important to stress that this inter-religious dialogue is not just a feature of the Pope's um, visit here in Southeast Asia. Um, this has been a key part of... So, so Pope Francis is basically trying to create this religious harmony, which is a one world religion, right? And he's basically trying to teach everyone that we are all God's children and whatnot. But the Bible says in John chapter eight, verse four, four, um, you are of your father, the devil, and you will do, and your will is to do your father's desires. Okay. You can be children of the devil because of how you live your life, what you believe. First John chapter three, verse 10, um, by this, it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. For John chapter 3, verse 8, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. 
his work as as the Pope in, in his role as the leader of sort of um, all the world sort of Catholics ever since he's become the Pope he's wanted to strengthen interreligious relations um, and I think we can see in his first stop in Jakarta um, where he meets um, with very important sort of imam there in the largest sort of mosque in the region and of course on his last day here in Singapore um, he's engaging with uh, youths from many different sort of communities, not just Catholics, at the Catholic Junior College. So sort of, if you like, interreligious dialogue starts and ends his entire tour. So he is, in fact, a world leader and someone that one should listen to. I was quite struck, for instance, in his January address, I, was, I saw that he said he was concerned with escalating crises in the world and that he was concerned that World War III seemed to be fought piecemeal with so many conflicts growing. So that startled me a bit. We want to peace for the world, especially for the poor. In Timor, the Pope facing pressure to address the clergy sex abuse scandal that has rocked the Catholic Church and calling on leaders to prevent every kind of child abuse, but stopping short. You know, the only time you're gonna get peace in the world really when the Antichrist comes, he's going to make that seven-year peace treaty break within three and a half. Like, the Antichrist is going to come and promise peace and all this stuff. Like, And the peace he's going to promise is going to be through one world religion. Specifically referring to clergy abuse or issuing any apology. Last stop, Singapore, where Catholics are in the minority. The Pope circling back to that message of religious harmony, saying Singapore sets an example for the rest of the world. Everyone has the right to practice their religion. Everyone lives harmoniously here. A 12-day, four-country, two-continent journey that came amid concerns for his health. We want to show you some extraordinary pictures which came to us from the Vatican on what was, of course, an extraordinary day. Within hours of Pope Benedict announcing that he was to resign, take a look at this. Lightning struck St. Peter's Basilica. You can see it again now in slow motion. You know, um, Pope Francis is indeed a antichrist. He's not the antichrist, but he is a antichrist. He's like... This dude is like a forerunner. He's like a forerunner of the Antichrist. Listen, if those of you, if you guys are Catholic, this should be every sign for you to get out of Catholicism. Because look at the look at the Pope. Look at the person y'all look up to. This man is pushing forth. Your whole faith means nothing because your leader is telling you that all paths and all ways lead to God. So Jesus died, on, Jesus died on the cross means nothing. You can go to Hinduism, Buddhism, and be saved. And you get your houses in order. We're in the last days. The Bible says it's appointed for once for man to die, then the judgment. If you're not, in, you know, if you're not in right standing with God, you don't know if you're going. You know, if this is your last day, you don't know. So make sure you're right with God because we are in the last days. Don't get so caught up and all the drama and things not working out in your life, okay? Because understand the times that we're in right now. Get your house in order. 